General, need something? Sorry, guess I can't get my head out of the past. I moved around for a couple years. Working as a starship mechanic got me from place to place. I wasn't ready to settle down after the war. And I don't think I'll be the last. As long as I kept moving, I didn't have to think about what happened. Know what I mean? Maybe if I had the Force to lean on, I could have worked it out. But then, the Force didn't seem to be of much help to others. I decided I'd do something constructive. I wanted to make up for the things I'd done in the war. I wanted to design planetary shields, but there weren't many systems with the credits to spare. There was more that needed to be rebuilt than protected. I found out that Telos was going to be the flagship project for the Republic, and it sounded like something good. I saw Telos before the Sith raised it, and deserved a better fate. But Zerka ruined everything. I thought I could force Zerka out on my own, but I guess I can't fix everything myself. All I wanted to do was send a message, but I couldn't even do that right. That's the past, though. It's good to be working with you again, General. Something else I can help you with? That old thing? I built him when I was a kid. Been following me around for years now, despite what I've done to try and chase him off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. I would. But then I wouldn't be the only one with a floating sphere following him around. And I kind of like that. It's not that bad. I guess you'd know. You've always got someone following you around. He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. He's also good for singeing the pants of annoying techs. I've been thinking about doing some other work on him, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I can help you with? If the Republic would just rein Zerka in, there'd be no problem. But as long as Zerka is allowed to undermine the Athorian's efforts, Telos will remain dead. I can't take seeing my work being used by those bloodsuckers. But there's nothing I can do about it, so let's talk about something else. Something else I can help you with? I got tired of it. Kept dropping my hydro spanner. Figured I'd get a new one. I was only kidding. Actually, it was a souvenir from Malakor. I was lucky it was all I lost. But at least it gave me something to do, right? Everyone always said I was probably half machine anyway. Something else I can help you with? Let me see what you have. No, you're still missing any midi matrix and lens. Something else I can help you with? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space-worthy. Whoever made these repairs doesn't think like most mechanics. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape. Your features, your stance. Atris spoke of such Jedi, who followed Revan. How their bodies came to mirror the dark side within them. Because there is a chance of redemption within all of us, and there is no point at which the dark side completely claims one, no matter what their choices. No, it is what I believe. Atris did not believe such things. You may ask. I am training, so that if danger should strike, my body and my reflexes will be prepared. That, and I had forgotten how long hyperspace travel can be. If I do not have something to focus my attention on, I fear my sanity will erode as well. What do you mean, Pazak? What, again? No, I do not trust him. That too. That is untrue. You and the Iridonian trust each other. Or at least the Iridonian trusts you. 
We heard much of the Iridonian when we served Atris. Atris believed that the Iridonian held the knowledge to restoring Telos. Yes. His skill with machines is something beyond which most can aspire to. His shield technology surpasses the designs of even the most skilled of Ichani power architects. I do not realize if you know what it means to have such a one respect and follow you. The Iridonian allied himself with no one on the entire world of Telos, yet he will follow you at the risk of his life. His stance, in many ways, mirrors yours. Where he walks, he carries a world upon his shoulders. And like you, I do not know if he has ever faced it. The reasons for such siphoning of power are complicated, and I do not know all the answers. But there is something greater being achieved. The teachings at the Academy must be preserved, even if it draws strength from Telos. Yes. His skill with machines is something beyond which most can aspire to. I do not realize if you know what it means to have such a one respect and follow you. His stance... I will respect your wishes, and his. Forgive me. It does not sound like it is in the past. But I shall respect your wishes. You may ask. I am the last of the handmaidens. This is correct. I train so that one day that will no longer be true. It dishonors me that they would say such a thing to an outsider. But I cannot deny the truth in what they say. My thoughts are not always focused on training. Perhaps, once having known the ways of the Jedi, you may understand what occupies my thoughts. There is much knowledge on Telos, and only one of the Jedi remain. There is so much about their ways of battle, their forms, their stances, that may be lost forever if the last of the Jedi is taken from the galaxy. To the Ichani, battle is a means of communication. It is an art, in the truest sense of the word. Stance, form, discipline are a means of expression and communication. They speak one's heart and one's devotion to their cause. It was to the Jedi traitor Malak. It was to the Jedi traitor Revan. When Terrace was destroyed, it showed Malak's heart through its execution and intent. It was brutal, without finesse but showed his commitment to defeat the Jedi. Yet with Revan, there was the same commitment, but it was a subtle thing, like weaving threads in a tapestry or strokes upon a canvas. He spoke through battle and tactics in a way one could never do in words. He showed his heart at Malachor V, and finally, at the end of the Jedi Civil War. I believe he was speaking to Malak in that final battle, though few knew it. What stronger display than death for conveying one's sense of being betrayed by one's own student? Revan's anger must have been great indeed. I would have wished to have been there for that final exchange, and seen the truth of their conflict with each other. But to say that seems an untruth, based on what I know of the Jedi. The Force can drive others, but there is still choice, is there not? If there is no choice in the Force, then our teachings and our actions are for nothing. And I refuse to believe that is true. You may ask. I do not wish to speak of her to you. Her actions are her own, and to reveal to you if she sees fit. You may ask. Yes? I fail to understand the problem. I had heard the Corward systems had customs concerning modesty. But when training, such customs are not practical or efficient. I can see no fault in your reasoning. 
I do have bulkier clothes. Will this do? They suffice for training purposes. They belong to my mother. That is not something I wish to discuss. Is there something else you needed? It is a matter personal to me, and I do not feel comfortable discussing it with others. I have donned the robes to test my skills. That is all. You may ask. I am training, so that if danger should strike, that... How many more do we intend to gather to us? This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Then prepare for an army, I think, for it seems many more will come in time. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. Because I am not blind, that is why. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? The fool dances in your shadow for your favor. The woman, she worships you. The alien obeys you. Even within the machines, there are echoes. Watch them carefully, see their patterns, and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. I, I am but a mirror whose only purpose is to show you what your own eyes cannot yet see. Good, and then act upon it. It is a powerful tool to motivate others. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. Have you never asked yourself how Revan took the Republic and Jedi beneath him, how he made them his? Ah, but to make officers turn on their own people, to bomb innocent worlds, to make pacts, strong influence indeed. And where did these Sith teachings come from? And why did Revan embrace them so strongly? So many questions, yet the answers are few. Oh, did they? No. Revan met no Sith Empire, yet he learned their teachings. Many have mistaken the soldiers beneath Revan, the machines that were constructed to be the Sith. They are wrong. The Sith is a belief. And what Revan formed was not an empire, but something else. Yet how he did it is curious. And I suspect the answer to that question is tied to another. How was Revan able to corrupt so many so quickly? Not a one. But we shall see where our journey takes us, I think, and see how many answers we come across, yes? Ask, and I will answer. There are countless reasons, and I have neither the time nor the patience to list them all. No, she may have her uses. I will abide her presence, and so should you. Because Atris is a threat, and as much as she would try to use us against you, so may we use her servants against her. Do not see every enemy as an enemy. See them instead as an ally, whether they realize it or not. This situation may yet work to our advantage. Good. That is the most to be done until events unfold, as I'm sure they will in time. Ask, and I will answer.
Atris herself is not as familiar to me as perhaps she should be. Yet I feel I know her, yes. Because Atris's path is one I walked long ago, and it is a chapter of my life that has been read and closed. She has taken the first steps, I think. We shall see. Surely you felt the righteous anger, the spoken judgments, the lack of forgiveness. I was a historian once, gathering the relics of the Jedi, learning the ancient mysteries. Always there were more questions. One quickly learns that the Jedi Code does not give all the answers. If you are to truly understand, then you will need the contrast, not adherence to a single idea. That is why Atris and the others blamed me, sentenced me. They believed me responsible for Revan's fall. You have already asked much. I do not wish to speak of this any longer. Ask, and I will answer. I misspoke before, and I do not wish to choose my words unwisely again. Leave this be. Ask, and I will answer. Does it matter? Of course it does. Such titles allow you to break the galaxy into light and dark. Categorize it. Perhaps I am neither, and I hold both as what they are, pieces of a whole. Know that I am your teacher, and that is enough. What do you wish to hear? That I once believed in the Code of the Jedi? That I felt the call of the Sith? That perhaps once I held the galaxy by its throat? That for every good work that I did, I brought equal harm upon the galaxy? That perhaps what the greatest of the Sith Lords knew of evil they learned from me? What would it matter now? There is only so much comfort in knowing such things, and it is not who I am now. Take what strength you may steal from me. That is all I need be to you. In you all my hopes rest for the future, for the Force. If it means so much to you, then this I swear to you upon my life, upon our lives, that when your training is complete, I will answer everything. There shall be no more shadows between us, only truth that exists between master and apprentice. 